trick or treat. Today's lesson is both a treat and a trick. I'm going to teach you how to change a plain t-shirt into this spiderweb shirt just in time for Halloween. For this lesson we're going to use 40 weight polyester thread and black is what I'm choosing to use. However, you could switch and use a really nice contrasting color like this fluorescent green or maybe a fluorescent orange should you like to have it be a little bit more playful. I'm going to start by getting the stickerman stabilizer ready to fit the frame and you do so by laying it down on top of the stabilizer and marking with a sharpie marker or permanent marker all the way around. Then we're going to go ahead and cut the shape out. Now getting the stabilizer to separate from the release liner can be challenging at times. Remember the shiny side is the release liner side and the stabilizer is actually the matte side. So I take a piece of scotch tape. This is the easiest way of getting the stabilizer to remove from the release liner. So you just kind of rub like that. And then you gently just kind of peel back toward the stabilizer and it starts to separate from it. Just like that. I lay a piece of the stick and rinse now that is pre-cut onto the frame. Both the stabilizer and the adhesive are wash away. What, what I'm doing is stretching it and making sure that it's really tight. Keep, see how you can reposition it? Just keep peeling it back and repositioning it. Our frames are designed for stabilizers to stick to them, so they have an uneven surface that makes it easy to peel it off and then to reapply it. Now you're just going to choose where on your t-shirt you want to place your spider web. Something to consider is that if you want to position three spider webs across, then you'd have to make sure that they are the exact same size or uh, proportioned um, equal. So what I like to do is asymmetrical, which is like what you see here where I have five or more spider webs and they are mixed up in, sh in size and shape and position on the shirt. This way, no one can tell if you messed up. This is also best suited for a top that has a high neck so that you don't end up, well, making it too sexy unless that's what you're going for. So now what I'm going to do is simply take this stabilizer that's already taut and take the shirt now and we just simply lay it right over the hoop with the stabilizer on it. And then for the fun part, you take your scissors and cut right through the shirt. And it's best to do a circle. I've tried it with octagon shapes and other shapes and circles tend to look better when it's all over with. So you can see I'm cutting the sticker and also cut right through the shirt. And you can see the stabilizer on this side and the t-shirt on that side. Now we're going to take and remove, get the sewing machine ready for embroidering for creating a spider web, which is in essence free motion embroidery, kind of mixed with a little cut work design. We're going to use the stretch 9014 needle because the t-shirt is a stretch material. 9014 allows that, that 40 weight polyester thread to go through the eye and the facing groove on the needle will allow that 40 weight thread to pass through really nicely. You want to make sure that you have a good amount of bobbin thread on your bobbin as well. 
because what we're doing when we create this spider web is we're utilizing both the needle and the bobbin thread. So it's important that you match the needle thread and the bobbin thread in size and color and brand. I'm going to go ahead and remove my sewing machine's snap-on adapter and we're going to go ahead and leave it with nothing on there. Now this machine when I use the scissors to cut the thread or when I go to cut my bobbin thread it makes it too short. So I'm going to go ahead and not cut it using that but now bring the bobbin thread up. In other words, you want to make sure that you have a good amount of thread to hold on to. If your machine has a oscillating hook system, and that's where you take your bobbin and you put it into a case and then you insert it from the front side of your machine. If you have one of those, then you need to be more careful about beginning your stitching. But you can do this as well. So now what I'm going to do is get my little handle ready on the frame. And this is the handle that comes with the octahoops that allows you to draw. This will give me more accuracy as I draw between the hole on the spider web. I'm going to use a straight stitch and simply leave your machine on whatever tension setting it was at. And remember, stitch length is irrelevant when doing true free motion. The feed dogs can be lowered or raised. I'll do a little of both so that you can see that you can leave them up. However, it does get a little distracting when you're sewing through this opening right here if the feed dogs are moving underneath. So step one will be to bring your bobbin thread up through the shirt. And then we're going to put our finger down on top of the threads. And then sew a few stitches and come back and go back again. And now we're going to go ahead and take and cut those off. And we're ready now to go all the way around the circle I'm using a straight stitch. If you go off a little bit, that's okay. But you want to come back and catch that shirt. So if you can tell, I'm not moving the hoop like this with both hands and, and lifting my elbows and trying to move the fabric around. Instead I'm just drawing with this just as you would draw a circle on a piece of paper. Uh, because of that I have a lot more accuracy than I would if I were using a traditional method. So I'm going to get this t-shirt to behave a little bit better because it, it was dragging on the surface of the machine. And for those of you who do not have the ability to lower your machine, I like to show you with the machine up to show you how we handle the different challenges that may come up as a result. So if you take your t-shirt and you just kind of roll it up, and then you safety pin it in that rolled up position, then it won't fall down as we go and continue embroidering. Now we're going to continue going all the way around the circumference again of this circle. So basically we want to go at least two passes all the way around. And what that does is it really, really locks that shirt to the stabilizer that's beneath it. And now for the fun part, choose what you would consider middle of this. And remember, the first line of stitching, wherever you decide middle is, is the middle. You just kind of see it as, as a a whole circle and you're just going to slice down the middle of it. This might be easier to you to do using the marks on the machine to help guide you so that you know that you're coming across as a circle. And see how now I've joined it together on this side. What I like to do is go back and forth counting one, two, three, four, Five, and then we're going to go zigzag 
but I'm not actually using a zigzag stitch. I'm simply moving the hoop left and right as I move the hoop away from me. And it brings all of those threads together and gives you this nice, strong, almost, it almost looks like um, some type of cording that you've purchased. Now we're going to go ahead and come across and go to what I, what I believe is middle so that I can make an X going through the opening. And if you're not exactly accurate, nobody's going to notice. So one already now, I'm going for my second pass, two, three, four, five, and now instead of moving side to side, I'm moving up and down to create that zigzag. So now we have an X. And it's not exactly accurate all the way around, but it really won't be noticeable as we continue to progress. Now I'm going to divide that triangular shape in half and come across looking at that spot as I move the hoop. I want my needle to ultimately cross at that intersection there. Now I stop looking here and start looking at the middle here and continue to slide it over. One, two, three, four, five. Zigzag across. So now you can see that those feed dogs have been going up and down the entire time. And just to help you not get too distracted by that, I'm now going to lower it and continue. Now I'm going to go across here. You see this time I went right to, to the middle, but you can see that I have two separated lines as a result. Much better to come out and come, come back around, start from the outside edge and go in. Two, three, four, five, and there's nothing wrong with counting out loud. They say it's a sign of intelligence to talk to yourself out loud. So now you can see that we have what looks like a wheel, which could be fun. And now we're going to go ahead and come down not all the way to the center, just a bit out. And in this case, I'd say there's a little bit more than a half or an eighth of an inch out from the center. And I go back and forth, and what I call that is anchoring. So we're basically anchoring our stitch to that strand. And we cross over, come to the next, and anchor that again. Come over to the next one and anchor it, which is one, two, three stitches back and forth. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And it really looks nice to have that really thin line, except for it doesn't make for a very strong short shirt. So I would go back around. And isn't that neat how once you anchored it, it kind of stays there? It's my third time around. Fourth time around, and now zigzag across. So if we were to switch to a zigzag stitch, it would be much harder to manipulate and go all the way around. You'll notice on this side I'm a little closer than I am on that side, but it's really not going to be noticeable when the shirt is all done. Now we're going to go up and come across, however close you are. We'll determine how much skin is showing in the web. So if you want to be more modest, then you would want to space your spider web stripes closer together. But if you go too close, then it starts to lose the appearance of a spider web. You can also do this. One, two, three, four. Come across. One, two, three, four. Come across. 
One, two, three, four, and come across. Two, three, four. After a while, you might start feeling like you can go faster. But I have found that in this kind of situation, it's best to just take your time. Should you make a spider web that you don't like, you can simply cut it away and start again. Anchor, cross, one, two, three, four. Anchor, one, two, three, four. One, anchor, one, two, three, four. Definitely better for me if I continue going around in that same direction. So what I'm showing you is how sometimes we're good at doing something one direction and then if we switch directions then we won't do as well. So pay attention to what you find easier. One, two, three, four. Anchor it. Two, three, four. So you could stop here and leave all of that exposed skin. And, and sometimes spider webs are like that where they, they have a lot of thread in the middle and then they, they're like connected out to the trees. If you've ever almost walked into a spider web then you know what I'm talking about. So it would be fine to leave it like this. However, I'm going to go and do another round and go back the direction that I find easier. Okay, another thing that you want to do is go around and reinforce the edge on that shirt by doing that same zigzaggy motion. And even go back over like a few times, straight stitch. You also want to make sure that every one of the, the lines of stitching that crosses into the shirt, that you take it into the shirt a good amount. So about a quarter of an inch past the edge of the material, I'm just doing a few rows of stitching. Coming across one. Kind of embroidering the edge of the shirt to give it a actual finished edge and just a zigzagging movement. Once again, here we have a connecting thread. Side side, a straight stitch over. I think that we are done, so I'll go ahead and cut the thread. And now we're going to go ahead and pull the embroidery, make sure that these. Safety pins are disconnected so I don't damage the shirt. And we're going to go ahead and bring the embroidery into itself. Just pull. And you see how it is tearing this hole right in there. Oh, I didn't cut my bobbin thread. See, I can even put my fingers right through so you just continue tearing. Now I'm, I'm more ripping toward it because if you don't then you might end up doing that and then we'll have a harder time patching. If it does start to rip then spin the hoop around and start tearing once again a tearing but pulling into the embroidery. So we just have this one little spot here that we can tear off. Now I'm going to patch the hole so that I can do another spider web. As you can see that you have created this neat little spider web right there. Okay, for the next one, I'm going to take a piece of the stick in that scrap and just kind of look and see is it going to cover the hole that we have in here. Then we peel off the release liner. 
And be careful not to put sticker to sticker. Make sure that you have the sticky side facing up. And I had the tear area, you can see right here. So I'm going to position it so that the sticker crosses or goes beyond that opening. And you can take the release liner that you use to peel off and rub it. If you don't have fingernails, this would be a good time to use one of our pressers. Peel back. Stretch it out taut. Rub it. So now that is patched you may have loosened it up and if you have got a little bit of slack in that then you can reposition it again by peeling it off and stretching it back to the frame. And we're ready for the next one. When you position the net, this shirt for the next try to think about the fact that where, where your bra might be positioned is something to consider if you don't want bra straps showing through. By making them not the same size and not located the same distance away from the neck of the shirt, we will do an asymmetrical design and trick the eye. So once you know that you have it nicely secured, once again we're going to go ahead and cut right into the shirt. You can see I'm getting pretty close to the other spider web, which is which is fine. We've built up that, that edge there, I've made that shirt really strong, so there's no reason why you can't bring one spider web close to the other. And continue cutting until you get a nice round shape. You could draw on your shirt before different shape circles. I would guarantee that you do different sizes and um, it would help you feel more confident when going to cut your shirt away. Just remember, if you start out with a smaller circle, you can always go bigger, but you can't make that bigger circle smaller. Okay, there we go. Cir circular enough, <laughs> round enough for my liking. And remember, it is a Halloween costume after all. And once again, repeat what you did before. This one done. Now we can have some fun with this and place some spiders on top of the spider web. And any remaining stick and rinse stabilizer that's on the back here can simply be rinsed away using the sink. So you don't even really have to wash it to wear it. That's what the back side looks like. And now the front. I hope that you enjoyed learning how to make this spooky Halloween shirt. Know that you can also use the same technique to make trick-or-treat bags for your children to enjoy on this Halloween. And from my family to yours, Happy Halloween!